morning and welcome to another vlog. Hi, Editing Morgan here to say that later on in this video, I take some vlog footage while I'm out on a walk with Marcy and I did not do a good job keeping my hands steady. So um, if I give you motion sickness, I'm very sorry. I've decided that like every other video is gonna be a vlog. I'm just gonna do it every weekend whenever I have a free day. And that's what this channel is going to be, because I like doing it, and I think it's fun. And Elsa's being very sweet today. It is about 9.30 on Sunday, Sunday, March 21st. I am listening to The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. It is a, like, a reverent murder mystery comedy about The Thursday Murder Club is, like, a group of four 80-year-olds who live in this retirement community, and when someone is killed, they decide to investigate. They kind of like have the help of a young police constable in like the local like town force. And it's very funny, honestly. I'm about 80% in, so I only have like two hours left of the audiobook, but I honestly really like it. It's like funny. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It's just very like light humor and I'm enjoying it a lot. I can definitely see why it was so popular last year. I mean, I haven't seen a lot of people on booktube talking about it, but I know that like sales wise, it did like extremely well. The Thursday Murder Club is Elizabeth, Joyce, Ibrahim, and Ron, and the police officer's name is Donna, and it's just like all very fun. I will say like Donna is black and Ibrahim is Egyptian, and um, Donna being black, I literally did not know until it was very just like, like, I think it's been mentioned once that she was black and like nothing else about her character is in any way like different at all. Like she's just like, it's very representation for representation's sake or like diversity for diversity's sake is what it feels like, but I'm still really enjoying the book. So that's pretty good. I'm going to go on a walk today because I've been going on a walk every day. The other books that I want to read this weekend, I have a net galley arc for a graphic novel called The Vein and it's about vampires robbing blood banks like throughout the last hundred years. There's like some investigator who's kind of like piecing it together and it's about like glamour and eternal youth and stuff like that. So it's really fun. And then I think the next audiobook I'm going to start is Timekeeper by Tara Sim. And that is my buzzword readathon book because it has the word time in it. And that's like the March word. And then I think that's like all I can manage for today. If I finish the graphic novel and I'm like really feeling like I want to read something, I'll probably pick up Heart, I don't know what it's called, Heartbeat something. It is a romance novel by an indigenous author that I'm reading because of the like indigenous romance read along thing that Beautifully Bookish Bethany is doing. And this is the one for March and the live show is on the 25th and I want to read it before then. So that's the plan for today. I'm gonna go eat some breakfast and I will see you guys later. We're out here on the walk and I just finished the Thursday Murder Club. So I have a few thoughts. One, this is definitely the kind of mystery that you read when you're, it's not the kind of mystery you read when you're looking to, come on Mars. There's, there's a burger behind a rock that she wants to get. This isn't the kind of mystery you read when you want to read a book where you can figure out what's going on at the same time as the characters. Like it's not the kind of mystery you read where you scour every sentence looking for hints and like you figure out what the, who the killer is before. Like I guess you can theoretically, like uh, some of the clues are there, but I would definitely say this is the kind of mystery you read when you love mysteries, but you're really in it for the ride and the story and maybe not like, was I surprised by the twists and turns? Yes, but in a fun way, not in like a gasp shocking way, but I really liked it. I will say the end, it's a bit sadder. It's more of a sadder note than I was expecting. But of all the main characters, Elizabeth, the ringleader, feels the least like a real person. Oh, Marcy has decided to take a little break. Elizabeth feels the least like a real person where I think Joyce probably feels like the most like a real person. I don't know, but overall, 
I really liked it. I don't know. I had a good time. I've been talking about it nonstop. I recommended it to my uncle. We're here taking a little break. Went on the a little bit of a longer walk than usual so you know that's what you get but I just wanted to share my immediate thoughts I really liked the Thursday murder club and apparently it's the author's like first first book and I'm surprised it definitely didn't have to me like first novel vibes like it felt very fully realized as a story as as a place like I think it really had a sense of place and I really enjoyed that I could picture everything happening I really liked it I definitely again melancholy at the end much more so than I was expecting but not in a way that puts me off and I definitely can't wait to read the second one but who knows when that one's gonna come out because they haven't even announced like the title yet so yeah thoughts thoughts I really liked it I feel like it's been a long time since I read a book like that where I really enjoyed it but in like it's not like a new favorite favorite like it's not like when I think of 2021 and I think of books I really love immediate thought come on Mars is Gideon the ninth like that is definitely so far my favorite book of the year and this is not like that but I really enjoyed it and I think it's gonna be one of those books where it doesn't get five stars for me but it still becomes a book that I think about very fondly and will recommend to people I think it has a really big mass like good mass appeal not and not in a way that makes it too generic I'm just I don't know what I'm saying anymore I really liked it I don't know I think what I meant to say when I was talking about how like this isn't a book you read to figure out the mystery first is that it's a very character driven mystery like you read this book and you keep reading it because you enjoy this fun quirky cast of characters again I can't I just thought it was so funny like giggling out loud that type of funny and I don't know I keep saying I don't know I don't it was just a good book and that's why it was probably so popular obviously like I'm not saying anything new but yeah Okay, so I'm going over to my uncle's house later to hang out, but since I can't drive my car right now, I can't just like go over whenever I want. I have to wait until my mom is ready to go over. So while I do that, I'm going to be reading The Vein. So I have it in graphic novel form and I have this laptop that folds into a tablet. I don't really like using it like this because I feel weird with the buttons on the back and it's just kind of heavy. It's not like ideally suited to this but it's useful when I have like graphic novel stuff because I can just read them like this and it fits a full page it's like the size of a book I have a nice screen so that is what I'm gonna do and very excited to read about these vampires it seems to kind of be set up as like almost like noir detective vibes so the federal investigator who's like looking into the robberies of all these blood banks is kind of like on their trail but I'm only 20 pages in so who knows hello again it is much later it's almost six and I'm on another walk with Marcy right here but this time I'm in my uncle's neighborhood and a lot of people are outside so I'm doing that embarrassing thing where people <laughs> talk to their phone in public but I wanted to update you about just like what I've been doing so I finished the vein like really quick it was like it took, like half an hour and I liked it it's it covers a lot of time like it starts in the 30s like late 30s and it finishes in like 2017 I think and it follows these four vampires as they're figuring out how to survive robbing blood banks and you know the world's changing technology's advancing and then like I said at the same time there's this FBI agent who is investigating trying to figure out what's going on there and it was a little disappointing to me honestly because the book is only 140 pages long and I just don't think that there was enough Oop, there's people there I just don't think that there was enough time to really get into like the plot or the characters so it's covering a lot of ground timeline wise and it felt like each section was very surface level I feel like there's a lot of interesting things you can explore with this concept and I also felt like you really didn't get to know any of the characters like there's this four main vampires and you really don't know anything about them and you, you just you start to figure out what their personalities are by the end 
because they re react to different things like differently and I do like that it's two men and two women and the women are in a relationship the whole time but you don't know anything about their origins like where did they come from how did they meet why have they been you know living this way for so long you don't get any of that like there's so much that could have been done I feel like this book which I think was originally published in shorter sections and this is maybe a culmination of shorter you know installments I'm not even I'm not really sure but I do wish that this 140 page book were maybe split into three sections maybe and each of those three sections was like a hundred pages I feel like you would have been able to go into a lot more depth with some really interesting moments that aren't in their lives because the vampires like get involved in World War II and they have you know something that goes down in Cuba in the 60s and etc it's like there was just I wish it was longer but I came over to my uncle's house he made me grilled cheese and we hung out and he let me talk his ear off about the Thursday Murder Club for like an hour or so thanks to him but he also got it from the library so I convinced somebody that it's something that he should pick up and I told my grandpa about it when he dropped by because I honestly think my grandpa would like it but grandpa talks a lot and doesn't really always hear when people talk back to him which is, I do that too I get it from him so I'll just tell him again about the book probably tomorrow anyway going on a walk with Marcy I'm gonna go on a whole loop around the neighborhood so it should take me I don't know how long it's about a mile and I just started but I'm a little out of breath because Marcy at the start of every walk she kind of pulls fast and I'm talking at the same time so it's a lot going on but I'm about to start listening to Timekeeper by Tara Sim not exactly sure if I remember what it's about but I will tell you later bye morning so it's about eight I filmed a clip last night talking to you about timekeeper and stuff like that and I didn't like the audio so I'm just scrapping that and I'm gonna tell you all that stuff today I also want to apologize for how shaky oh, I don't know about that light with the lines on my face but I want to say sorry for how shaky the camera is while I was walking around with Marcy yesterday I, I mean talk about the vein and everything in that clip and I don't know it was nice to go on a walk so I thought I'd keep it in even if it is so shaky oh my god anyway it's about eight o'clock I uh, this is like the second night in a row where I had trouble falling asleep usually I'm someone who like I'll turn on music to fall asleep and I'm out before the first song is even over but last night and the night before like sometimes I'll go through these moments where I just cannot get comfortable and then I try to fall asleep and I'll spend half an hour like wiggling around trying to adjust my clothes because like I can't handle even like a single cr my shirt being folded like at all against my skin like it's very weird it's super annoying and it'll go away soon and I'll go back to falling asleep in like two minutes but until that happens it's annoying so I started Timekeeper yesterday by Tara Sim and it is a historical fantasy about a world where clocks and time and the magic of time is like integral to the functioning of the world so it's not like here where you know we use time to keep track of the world in that in that like fantasy universe time makes the world work so if you skip an hour on the clock you literally lose an hour of real time. If the clock freezes, time freezes. And the book follows Danny. He's a clock mechanic. He's the youngest mechanic ever, he's 17. And previous to the events of the book, he was in some sort of accident and now kind of has a fear of clocks. And then also something happened with his father. It's kind of implied that his father died because of something having to do with the clock, but I'm honestly not sure, it hasn't told us yet. So, I'm liking it so far. It's set in like I think the 1870s, which is an era that I enjoy reading about anyway. So I'm liking it and it is gay. The main character Danny is gay and like it's like on the page, not just like it's implied. He likes boys. Like he 
came out to his friends and family prior to the events of the book as well. So I'm liking it so far. And then I also last night started Heartbeat Braves. It is a contemporary romance by an indigenous author about Rayanne and Henry. And so Rayanne works at the Urban Indian Center, which is like a community center in, I don't, it's somewhere west, but it's a city, I don't know which one. I don't, it might, they might be in LA. She works at this Urban Indian Center and they've been struggling to, you know, move their location and get their services through and there's been some restructuring of the board and the new chair of the board, Arnie, kind of insists that his nephew Henry be given a job and kind of gives him the project managing job for one of Rayanne's like passion projects. And so they're like for, forced to work together. And I'm 44% in, they haven't like kissed or anything yet. Actually, no, they have kissed. I will say, I don't like love the writing of this book. I don't find the writing particularly inspired in any way, but the story is fine and I like the characters so far. And I really like the way that the characters feel about their attraction to each other, Henry and Rayanne, because it feels like very realistic and relatable to me. So like Rayanne will, you know, she's like, she's treating him like a normal person and they're just like talking and vibing and hanging out or like working or whatever. But also at the same time, she'll be like his man hands. And I'm like, I feel that girl. I feel that. Not hating it, but not like loving it. And I'm interested to see where it's going once the romance really picks up, but I am almost halfway through, so hopefully the romance will pick up soon. So with all that out of the way, I am sitting in my backyard and I'm probably gonna read for like half an hour and then I'm gonna go in and have breakfast and then I'm gonna go on another walk. And I will probably not take video on my walk again since probably it's getting repetitive for you guys. <laughs> Sorry about that. I work at four today, so that's like when I'm gonna cut this vlog off again. And then actually midday, my mom and my sister are going on a trip to visit a college that my sister got into. So that's the plan. I'm gonna be home alone for the next couple days. It's gonna be great. And I will see you guys in a bit. Okay, something I wanna add about Heartbeat Braves is that it is a little infuriating Henry just being given Rayanne's job basically because he's 24 and aimless and first of all deeply relatable I get that completely I am also 24 and aimless and unemployed just like him but it's like everybody's being asked to baby him at this job like he's given the job and then Arnie the guy on the board is just like just help him out just you know work with him mentor him help him with his like whatever you know I'm gonna give him your job he's gonna get the credit for your event and it's just like he's it's very just like it just like men getting promoted with such like such less qualifications than women and it's just like I know this happens in real life too and it's just so infuriating especially since he's 24 and she's 21 about to turn 22 which it seems a little unrealistic that she's like this put together I will say at like 21 but it's just like so because I'm reading it and it's infuriating and every time I feel like Rayanne is like justifiably angry and upset everyone is like oh come on can't you just work with him we're gonna set him up we're gonna make you guys share a desk and we're gonna give him your event and he's gonna get the credit for this retreat you were organizing and I'm just like what the fuck is going on here stop babying this grown man he can get it together himself I mean like yes it's nice that his family's helping him out with a job I wish I had family that could just hand me a job, but like, it's just so infuriating. But anyway, I still like his character and it's fine. I'm just like, God, right? It's just like annoying. How's it going, cool cats? I don't know why I just said that. Anyway, it is 1240 something and my mom and my sister are on their way to visit a college. I have the house to myself for the next three days. I'm gonna make some mac and cheese. And right now I'm gonna update you on Heartbeat Braves. So I'm 75% in. The romance is like fully started. This book is honestly like more about, it's this really interesting, like kind of 
straddling the line between romance and contemporary even though it's a contemporary romance anyway the sex scenes have been pretty good they are both like they're off page so you see like some of the foreplay and like lead up to the deed but then like it'll cut and be like later when they were lying tired on the bed or whatever so it's this that's a little like meh I prefer like the full scenes in my books I don't know but I will say the like lead up and situations and the way that to the situations and the way that they talk to each other this is like the most like realistic I've ever seen sex scenes be in a romance to like the way where like they're joking and they're talking and it's sometimes a little awkward but it's like it's fun and you're laughing and you're just like enjoying the person that you're with whereas I think romance novels often really go for like the the passion and like the overdone dirty talk which can be really fun and I do enjoy my romance novels as well but like this just is very the chemistry between them is really realistic in a way that doesn't feel overemphasized for the sake of the romance novel and I'm really enjoying it. I still don't know if I'm like loving it. I don't know if I'll continue with the series or anything because there's four books in like the Crooked Hearts series or Crooked Rock something like that and like it's completed just the four of them but I don't think I'm gonna read all of them. I'm enjoying this and it's good. And I'm gonna make my mac and cheese now, so I'll see you later. Hi everyone, we're gonna have terrible lighting in this last clip, but I am, oh, there we go. Okay, that's a little better. I'm wrapping up the vlog. I made my mac and cheese, then I came in this room, I turned on a timer for half an hour before I had to leave for work, and then I laid down with Marcy and closed my eyes, and I napped for like an hour, and I think I had a nice day yesterday. I finished three books. So I finished the audiobook for The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. Okay, Marcy is making her exit. And then I, what did I do? I read The Vein by, I think it's the lead writer was Elliot Rahal. I don't know who else worked on that. Um, and then I just finished a few hours ago, like an hour and a half ago. Heartbeats Brave, and I really liked it. I think something, because I read mostly historical fiction, and historical fiction is an, in a lot of ways, it's like this idealized view of the past. Like, it's not what real life was actually like. Um, most of the books that I read are finish with, or at least the romances, finish with this perfect happily ever after they're rich so can have kids whatever and this one was more of a happy for now but in not in a bad way like I really really liked how this book ended especially in terms of the status of Henry and Rayanne's relationship so what was it heartbeat braves I think I'm gonna give it four stars I really liked it and I am reconsidering like whether or not I'm gonna read the next books but we'll see I they're not like any Thing I'm gonna read anytime soon. Yeah, I'm really into it. I really loved The Thursday Murder Club. That book is probably a four and a half star, but that's probably a book where I'm gonna give it four and a half stars, and then at the end of the year, I'm gonna be like, and this was one of my favorite books of the year. It's not a five star though, and it's just like one of those books that I love, but I don't think it's a five star book, even though if I reread it, it'll probably become a five star book, but for now, four and a half stars. And then The Vein, I think I'm gonna give it two and a half. And I'm started Timekeeper, so it's like a nice, I'm gonna finish it this week, I'll have done my March Buzzwordathon book, and it's just like, I'm feeling pretty productive, just pay no mind to the fact that I really need to do my laundry, like, that was my, what I needed to do today, and I didn't do it at all. I feel really productive reading-wise, and... I'm just feeling good. I hope you liked the video and I will see you guys next time. Let me know in the comments whether or not you've heard, you had heard of the Thursday Murder Club before because I hadn't really heard of it before, but I think it was like a really popular book last year. I, I don't know. Anyway, I will see you guys next time. Bye.